We are live. I'm so excited to be here with such a star, Sarah Papworth. She is incredible. Her work is extraordinary. I think she's a genius. Um, I am going to introduce her in just one second, but I want to let you know about the Artivities booklet that my artists all made in case you haven't seen it and and Kim where is it I think on the blog or something it's uh, downloadable from the website there's a PDF tab on the website you can get it from there oh good okay and Sarah did this really cool word search so you'll have a lot of fun with this um, that's great so let me introduce the wonderful Sarah Sarah loves to spend her days painting and gardening at her home in North Cotswolds, UK, and watching Netflix. And we'll ask her favorite Netflix show. She used to be a homeware textile designer and with the help of the Make Art That Sells classes, my classes. Thank you, Sarah. She moved into the world of illustration and done pretty darn well. Um, some of her favorite clients include the Washington Post, HarperCollins, Publishers, Scholastic UK, Quarto Group UK, L'Oreal Paris, Workman Publishing, Floris Editions, American Greetings, Molly Makes Magazines, and Callisto Publishing. And her work has been seen in the, tra the Trend publications, WGSN, Trend Bible, Country Homes and Interiors, artists and illustrators and landscape magazine. And that's just a few of the many, many things she's done. Sarah dreams of having a studio by the sea one day. And we all hope that's true. Welcome, welcome Sarah. Hi Lilla, thank you. It's so good to have you. We have so many questions for you. Thank you everybody for typing in in the chat. It's really fun to see you. And don't forget, as Kim said, to put your questions in the Q&A panel which you can find at the bottom of your um, screen, that nifty little thing. I'm going to launch the poll and you can fill that out as well. So there that is. And um, that is fun to fill out and it tells us a little bit about you. So that's great. Okay. We were talking before we went live about something that popped up today when we were emailing me in Boston, Massachusetts, you in England. And I said, wait a minute, this is the hundredth day of your hundred day um, Hermit Art Club. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, so and, it, it, and see, today so, is this. So yes. yeah, this is the hundredth day. And that was totally a coincidence that it was going to happen on that day. And when I saw the date, I was like, yes that's brilliant yeah just perfect so i've been doing the 100 day project and um just creating art videos to give a little bit back to my followers and to also practice doing videos really to get a bit more used to it and teach and yeah it's been really really great they're just wonderful and unbelievable and very generous of you the whole series is free right yeah, although now that the 100 days is gone, it's um, it's not so available. There's weeks one to four available on YouTube. Um, but yeah, the rest, the rest, I've got to decide what to do with it. But yeah, so it, it was free. <laughs> Which is amazing. Yeah. And now, but absolutely you should monetize it, 100%. It's, yeah, so it's it 14 value. weeks. No, 15 weeks, 15 wow. weeks. It was quite hardcore to do, like it was quite full on because I only decided to do it about about six days before. I knew I wanted to do the 100 day project because I've done it in past years and I knew that it was pretty intense. But I, whenever I've done it, it's really propelled me forwards and pushed me. It has pushed me out of my comfort zone, but um, I wanna ask it's always about been that, really- but Let's tell everybody what it is exactly. It's a series of videos. Will you tell them a bit about it and some of the topics? Yes, so for this 100 day project, it's um, basically I'm sharing my, it's videos um, and little prompts and things and projects. And I'm sharing how I actually work. So um, I've given things for people to do. So little exercises and things. 
And then at the end, I actually film, I film how I create things, how I do my techniques. Um, I give away quite a lot of information. And each week there's a project at the end, which you guys can do. And then I've also done myself so that you can see how I um, have approached it. I just so, and it's all by hand. It's not on Photoshop or Illustrator. So that was one of my things. I wanted to work more by hand. Mm. So though, yeah, that did have its challenges for me because I'm used to sort of doing a bit by hand, scanning it in and using Photoshop. But I wanted to try and keep it all, all hand painted. So I just want to give some examples. So one is on hand lettering, one is on drawing lettering, creating yeah. words, collage, nature gather, paint a scene people in yeah. sketching people so it's just fantastic it's really, yeah. really wonderful um <laughs> so that is it where can people find that sarah um so it's basically if you go on youtube so sarah papworth um on youtube there's the first weeks one to four um and then now that it's finished mm -hmm. um i will work out where I'm going to use as a platform. So there's nowhere at the moment because it's it's just finished today. So <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> no, but that's fine. I mean they get they get how many free? So that's four whole weeks free. Oh um, wow, that's incredible. Yes, yeah, so that's quite a lot. That's a whole month. So wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's um uh Javon Javon writes Hermit Art Club has been amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Aww. Rachel Arby says, Hermit Art Club has been so good, wonderful to watch Sarah work, very inspiring. Um, Thanks, good. guys. So just Google her on YouTube and you can learn more. So um, put your questions in the Q&A panel and you can chat in the chat panel, but we will see your questions if you put them in Q&A and we'll try to get everybody's. We also have a giveaway at the end you know, our little fun competitions. And this is what you will win, Sarah's incredible, incredible book. And I learned a lot, but even more importantly, I saw, I got to love. Yeah, her. I learned a lot doing the book as well, yeah. Just so fantastic. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about doing portrait books. You just learn so much about so many people. Yeah that you may not have um, had your attention drawn to before. And we will be looking at her work on, uh, on screen. So you'll get to see all that. So stay at the end to win that wonderful book. And if you don't win, you get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever books are sold. Indie bound, all the great places. Thank you for filling out the poll. We'll just leave that up a while. So, you have a really interesting story because you worked as a textile designer, as we said, which is all about color and decorative yes. pattern, repeat pattern, particularly florals, geometrics, that kind of thing. And yeah. then you now, as we see, you illustrate people, scenes, things, yes. stories, yes. narratives. Tell us about that process. I'm sure everybody's really interested to hear about that. Yeah, so it's funny actually because um, when I went to university, I actually started off doing fine art and then I changed to do textile design. And then after university, I then got the job as a homeware textile designer. And so I love, I absolutely, I still love that. And um, yeah, so when I went freelance, I think it was in 2012. Um, I was continuing doing a lot of homeware textile designs um, for freelance. And then I discovered the Make Art That Sells courses with you, Lila. And um, it was amazing, really, because it actually, I think I'd got to the point where I wasn't feeling the joy of my work anymore. And that's something you really helped me get back into my work. And I think through doing your courses, I think the first one I did was I think it's called Matt's B. Was that where there, there were quite a few different things you could try within? Five markets, yeah. Yeah, there was like editorial and maybe kids book and I can't quite remember now. No. It feels like a long time. I should know, but people <laughs> chime but in. I tried there. quite a few things, yeah. And um, it, 
yeah, it really um, reignited my joy for making art. And I just learned so much and I really, really grew. And I knew then that I wanted to do more illustration work. And um, as I started creating more illustrations through the courses, that's how I actually landed my first illustration job with Quarto. Um, it was completely random. They just, I mean, not completely random, but they just, I didn't email them. They just emailed me out of the blue because I think they saw my Instagram work, which was all built upon the maths courses because I learned so much about um, value and composition and yeah, so much. And so, yeah, then I started doing more illustration work and it grew and grew and grew. Now, how did they hear of Oh, they saw you on Instagram. Oh, good. yeah, yeah. Hear that but it's funny because when I used to do art at school, so before university, um, they, it, uh, what I mainly drew was people. So it's like I've actually sort of gone back to what I enjoyed as a teenager, really, what I really enjoyed doing then. So interesting. Yeah, I feel like I've gone sort of a bit full circle. But isn't that the truth? How we just keep yeah. really going back. Yeah, it's with our wisdom and our experience, but we keep going back. Mm. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. So, okay, so you, so then you got the Quarto book. That yes. must have been like a dream come true. Oh, like, yeah, it was amazing. Online. It was really crazy, crazy tight deadline. And I, I was thinking, how am I going to do this? But I knew I had to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I wanted to do it, but I just knew I had to make it work, and I did, and yeah, it was pretty crazy. I think it was about, they gave me four months to do about 84 illustrations. It was crazy. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't accept that now, but right. at the time I was like, I'm going to do this. It's a challenge. Oh. I do like a challenge. I do push myself. I probably pushed myself a bit too far that time, but yeah, it was a bit crazy, but I did it, and afterwards... I was so pleased with the work that I'd created mm -hmm. um, and then to see it in print and a book it yeah it was just amazing uh, yeah Everall really. O'Reilly says did you stay up late to finish um actually I really paced myself so it was long days so it might some days could have been sort of eight in the morning to eight in the evening but I took regular breaks um, sort of every hour I'd take at least five minutes um, and then I'd make sure I had a proper lunch because um, mm -hmm. I knew that I had to last for such a long time I mean it wasn't eight till eight every single day but yeah I tried not I made sure I got enough sleep I was just really focused on the job so I didn't really do much else I probably didn't do much socializing or anything but yeah I was really focused and just sort of knuckled down and got on with it Oh, someone wrote Hot Market Say Bolt Fabric, Home Decor Children's Books, Wall Art Gift Market. Yeah, that's it. And B was Stationery, Baby Apparel, Scrapbooking, Editor, and Party Paper. Oh, yeah, that was the first one I did, yeah. Thank you, I think. Oliver, Bronson, Yeah, I've Bronson. probably done them all. <laughs> Good, well, now. Um, what is, you know, you, I, I'm, I'm loving everyone hearing you talk about you paced yourself, you built in healthy habits, because I will yeah. tell you right now, viewers, if you work till three in the morning and don't get your sleep, you cannot sustain a brilliant career no. like Sarah has. You need to take care of your health because you need your best brain, you need your best body to be fully uh, alert to do work. Do you find that? I know you do because yeah. you're- Yeah, so it, I couldn't. Perfect couldn't function I don't think if I didn't and it, even if I don't for some reason I don't get enough sleep I'll try and have a nap in the afternoon I don't do that very often but you know I do try and really take care of myself and eat healthy food um, it's really important to keep my stam stamina up and I mean I'm not always working jobs like that I wouldn't do back to back you'd sort of do a job like that and then have a break. I think I took about two month break after that. <laughs> but um, yeah, really, really have to pace yourself in a job like that. I don't, I don't like um, doing harm to my body. Yeah, well, you're so wise. It's so important. And 
you know, when I was an illustrator working full time, I felt like an Olympic athlete. <laughs> oh, I've talked about this before, except for the athletic part. But in the sense <laughs> of completely the same, except for all the athletic part. No, but in that I had to really take care of my my physical health, mental health, mm -hmm. emotion, everything to mm -hmm. do your best. I mean, that's why your work is amazing and it's beautiful and it always looks, the quality is consistent. You don't, you. it's not iffy. It's not up and no. down. No, well. In I'm... the beginning for any <laughs> career. <laughs> For sure, no. Well, I have my moments, but yeah. I'm probably a bit of a perfectionist as well, which mm -hmm. I'm working on that, but yeah. You know, when I, 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 I was just thinking today when I was an illustrator and I would do a piece for a magazine. So magazines, let me explain, in the olden days were like Google, Netflix, Hulu, like magazines were the coolest and everybody read magazines and newspapers. But And so I would be doing a piece and I would just think, okay, no one is going to read this magazine or buy it, like maybe three people. Like I'd have to like do a mind game so I wouldn't freak out that millions of people were looking at it, going to look at it. Do you do a little mind games or are you pretty confident now? Well, when I'm working on a project or mm -hmm. um, what, working for a client, do you mean? Yeah, doing a piece and knowing it's going to be like a book on Amazon seen by millions no, I find that really exciting. What I find scary is things like this being on right. video. <laughs> I know. And it's why I did, partly why I wanted to do the 100 day project is video so I could, again, I'm always sort of pushing myself to, I don't, um, I don't like my fears to take a hold of me. So I like to, yeah, get, get on top of that almost. Oh, that's so good. Riley says, you're so good. You are, you just, it's completely natural. Uh -huh. No, I know it's, it, it, for us as introverts, as an mm -hmm. illustrator and as an agent, really we're behind the scenes people. Yeah. So yeah. We're emailing, you know, we meet with yeah. clients once now, not as much as the old days, but um, we're not video people. So I'm really pleased that you've done this. It's great. Yeah. And all no, it's fun. It's fun. It is fun. Um, it is. But yeah, the nerves are always there to start with. But yeah. Josh Talbot says being an illustrator really is a mental game. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah. so you, that's how you um, segued to being an illustrator. How do you begin an illustration? So you get the brief from the art director, you get the assignment, yes. it might be text, it might be they just tell you about it. And then what happens next? Okay, so once I have the brief, and generally, sometimes I go back to them and ask for more information because especially if it's a tight deadline, um, I want all the information to be there for me just to be able to start and concentrate on drawing, basically. Um, I will always do little thumbnails, probably only about that big. Mm. Um, just to sort of get an idea of what the layout will look like and they're really really basic um, and then once I've done a few of those and think I've got an idea I might start doing them a bit bigger again still really quickly sketching them out and then when I've got an idea I'll then go straight to you know like an A4 just I just draw it out on computer paper so I'm quite old school I guess because I don't I haven't got Procreate or anything, and I don't do it on Photoshop at that point. I like drawing by hand, and um, I like the marks that the pencil makes and um, the physical contact. Um, the feeling? With, yeah, and the feeling, and yeah, I'm just, it's something I'm just more used to, I guess. It's not that I won't ever do a rough on, mm -hmm. um, on the computer, it's just, it's what I go to really. And then I scan that in and send it to the client and they go, yay, love it, <laughs> usually. And then, um, and then I usually work it up on Photoshop. So that's, yeah, that's, and then so I import sort of textures and things. Your line drawings in your sketches, do you have an example handy of a sketch? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they're um, the way, so this is actually one of the briefs for the Rainbow Revolutionaries book. Oh, so that's actually not, that's the photos that they sent. Oh, they gave just you to photos. give you an idea. 
so that they had a sort of thing and they just said ballet dancer um they gave me a bit of information and said do you know do him in a pose a ballet pose and so i hope you can see this okay because the way well. i work is i sort of sketch out in pencil and then i sometimes go over the top with pen so i rub out the you can see i've done his head quite big to get the likeness mm -hmm. and then his body to get the shape and then it also has like a border page so in that book it has a main page and then a border page so i do them both on separate bits of paper to scale and then scan those in um i've got a few more so there's bits that i've rubbed out so it's not completely clear oh, that's but you can boring. see how i do my line work so i sketch it in by pencil i've got one here actually that's more would that's you just... just show them the pencil yeah it has so that's to go into pen for the art director do you have to go over in pen no so i do the pencil for the rough oh. Oh. Um, and that's what i would send the art director mm -hmm. um as the rough and then when they give me the go ahead i go over the top in pen and i rub out the pencil and then i scan that in and, and that use it in. as final illustration so, so that's why they're a bit sketchy. I'm not too precious about keeping all my workings because I know that I've scanned it in and I've got it saved. So, so I mean, it's quite you have random. You've all the bits and pieces, right? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so mm -hmm. I scan that in and then I pick, cut them out and then pick them out and then put them on the page where they're meant to go. Let's see if we have... I don't have that book, but I have this book. So we can see an example. This is so just to show. A oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I've got that one actually. The, oh, wow. So, yeah, that's the sketch for. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was magical. I, I have like, like you to show so that with hundreds of pages. And wow. <laughs> Tremendous. She's so, so yeah. okay. People listening, she's very magical. She's very um, intuitive. <laughs> Tell them about the day you won the Global Talent Search for Representation with my studio. What was that? Oh, yeah. So it was also my birthday. And I just knew that the universe wouldn't be that mean. And <laughs> I knew I just had a feeling I have to win. Surely it's my birthday. And I just really, I also did, um, I think Anka said something about like, you know, positive thinking. Mm -hmm. And I also had a page on my iMac um, as the screen saver that just basically had like pictures of I put my face on and put winner of the GTS and I had all like the, the oh. studio I wish I could show you but I don't have it here but it's oh, quite funny to see you have to send that to us yeah I will <laughs> so what what Sarah's talking about for those of you who haven't seen every webinar and I don't know why that would be no <laughs> um, Several of my artists have said that they wrote post-its like I am represented by Little Roger Studio before they were represented or I will be or something like that. These yeah, like affirmations, I guess. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. Um, the the Q&A panel is down at the bottom of your screen. You see where it has like chat and Q&A. So that's where you can find it. Um, let's... Well, we have questions and then we want to look at our amazing Im images. You're going to freak out. Oh, Sarah, uh, tell us about the World Illustration Awards. Tell us about that. I'm glad you asked, Lilla. <laughs> glad I did. I, um, yeah, it's so exciting to be shortlisted with two projects for the World Illustration Awards. And I only found out this, I think it was this month, or maybe it was the end of last month, actually, just at the end of last month. So I only just found out recently. Um, but yeah, I was so, I mean, Lilla, it was you that said you should enter some competitions. Mm -hmm. And so, thanks. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I knew you should. Absolutely. And yeah. I entered, yeah, it was the, um, so I entered this for the book covers. Love that. Professional too. book covers. So, 
got the box. And this cover actually came from, I think this might, if I can find it, I, one of the first, it was the first illustration I did for the inside, because quite often you do the covers last, you know, at the end. Right. And, I don't know if I, oh yeah, here it is. So this was the first illustration I did for them. That's so and gorgeous. this is what they decided they wanted for the cover. So that was the inspiration. But you can see how the fox is crying and this one is a bit sad and the colours are more sort of moody. Um, and the inside image is slightly different. And then the cover, they wanted the fox to be happy and for it to be more a sort of autumnal scene with autumnal colours. So, and I did the border the leafy board around the outside. So, so I thought that beautiful. might be interesting to show the difference. So beautiful. Okay, so we have some questions from the peeps. Um, do you sketch from life? Josh Talbot asks, do you sketch from life? Where do you go do to get excited to draw? Do, is that sketching like from life as in going outside and drawing? Or just rather than from photos, probably. Oh, right. I'd like to do more of that. And I have, I do do that. Mm -hmm. um, but generally I find with a project that a client has set, um, there's generally not loads and loads of time. So ideally, if there was something close by and it was linked to a project, I might, I might well do that. But quite often it's photos online or photos from the brief that they've sent. Mm -hmm. um, quite often the brief doesn't have enough images so I have to do my own research um, but yeah I'd love I do I do draw but that's more personal work from actual you know real life it's often nature and things like that I'd like to draw more people but obviously currently it's a little bit hard to be amongst lots of people right, right. why don't we dive in and look at your work yeah, yeah. great okay let's do that and we'll answer some questions too. Here we go. Can you see that, Sarah? Yes. Fabulous. Look, this is her beautiful cover uh, for, and, and check out her lettering and the joy. You know, I always say people buy your joy. Well, absolutely. You, it Doesn't this make you want to make art? Like you want to <laughs> make a letter like the, any of the, these letters it's so joyful it's so free it's so um and she's engrossed in her work it's pretty fabulous yeah so, it's fun it, it's fun to create things like that because um although you, you know it's it's the webinar banner but then it, it gave me a chance to explore with color and shapes and I always like to try something slightly new and so yeah it just it's it's great to be able to create things like that okay and just say next anytime next. you want to go to the next image tell so us about the so these are there's quite a few now that are from the rainbow revolutionaries book um and these are the things i'm showing in the pdf are basically my newest work so um yeah, I, re I chose this one because I just really like the composition, the colours. I, I do, I've been using more bright colours recently, I think. Mm. Um, and the brief for the book was to go brighter. And I just, I really enjoy these colours. And Interesting. Yeah. Was it, that because they asked you to or something happening that makes you want to do bright colours? They did ask, they because it's a kid's book, they did ask for brighter colours. Um, but it's always good to explore different colourways and they didn't really, I don't think they were too specific with, you know, what palette. They said, you know, you can choose the palettes. I don't, I don't think they, I don't remember them saying, oh, it has to be pinks or anything like that. So I was given quite a lot of free reign on the colour palettes for these. Beautiful. Look at all the incredible textures. Even the floor that he's standing on is this beautiful texture. And the texture on the coat on the left with the, uh, the pink and the deep orangey, it's just so beautiful. The hair of the man on the upper left, the textures, 
everything is so tended to, tended, cared for. <laughs> <laughs> next. Yes. Yeah, next. Um, so again, this is from the Rainbow Revolutionaries book, and I just really like the composition. This is one of the first ones I did for the book, because generally I think clients quite like to see one or two finished before um, you go and do the whole book, um, mm -hmm. you know, complete the whole book. And um, yeah, I just really like the textures I used. And I know it's quite central, but I just, yeah, I just really enjoy the way this one turned out. Because mm -hmm. you don't always know 100% how things are going to turn out. You That's hope, so true. you hope, yeah, you hope right. that it'd be nice, but um, yeah. And one of the most fun things is getting to the point where you've almost finished and you're just tweaking the colors. So the sort of, on Photoshop, that's one of my favorite things to do is just to tweak the colors until it just sings. Um, mm -hmm. Like if it's not quite feeling right, I can spend quite a long time working on the colors until they feel um, like it's right for me. Mm -hmm. I love how you did the people in this, in this stadium. Yeah, they just dots. <laughs> It's just so fantastic. I love it. And again, look at the texture for the grass. It's wonderful. Okay, let's look at the next one. Oh, the colors. Yeah, just really rich and vibrant. And um, I really, I, in this book, I added some sort of glow around some of the people. So I don't know if you can oh, see, yeah. but she's glowing a little bit. And um, that just gives me a lot of joy. <laughs> Yeah, I totally get that. Look at his shoes on the far left. All, both, <laughs> all the shoes are so fabulous. I love on the far left, the man with his black suit and his the white outlines, little delicate outlines on the suit. Her fan is just very, very feathery. It's, it does, you know, you stylize, you play, yet you communicate for example, the feathers of the fan, the sparkly sequence mm -hmm. of her dress, you do communicate. So we know what the thing is, but you push it to a very, in an almost abstract way. So yeah. Beautiful. And I add in textures, um, like hand painted textures, and you can't always tell that massively because sometimes I really make them quite opaque. Um, but yeah sometimes it's really subtle but most things do have a texture in it there's we have a question from carol tyler when i scan my artwork she writes it mm -hmm. never looks right colors are dull do you have any tips for settings or can you point us to a place to learn about how to scan our art um well with these with these drawings in particular because they're created on photoshop um i don't have so much that problem with these. Um, what I do scan in is the textures. So I might do an A4 page of um, sort of uh, pink dots or something that's uh, like painterly texture. And then I'll scan that in. And yes, scanning in things doesn't always, it hardly ever comes out exactly how it looks. And the best thing to do is to use levels um, on Photoshop and contrast and just play around with those um, and the saturation, hue and saturation mm -hmm. to get it looking how you want it to look. Um, Aaron Vanessa writes, hey Sarah, when you do full scene, these are some of your, your, your fellow students from, oh well, I think Aaron is newer, maybe she wasn't in your day. Hey Sarah, when you do full scenes, do you paint everything individually and then collage piece everything together in Photoshop? If so, how much planning do you do in advance to figure out where everything goes in the composition? Um, that's quite a, yeah, that's quite a long question. So I'm trying to, what did, what, what was the best? Any part of it that you want. Just, oh, right. <laughs> just, you know, um, yeah, in an so, interview, when you're asked a question, you can just answer anything, by the way. Okay, great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, when I'm creating work on Photoshop for clients, generally it is on Photoshop, and I will paint things separately. If I'm, if I'm doing a, ha a 
hand painted thing. A lot of my client work is done in Photoshop. But if I'm doing something hand painted, it is best to draw the items separately, scan them in, cut them out, and then put them all together. But saying that, I do use some of my sketchbook work in my portfolio, and that is um, all done in one go. It's all on one page. And it can be tricky because you have to scan it in um, and then, as I said, adjust the levels and the contrast and try it. And sometimes I need to add little bits on top because maybe, for example, the really bright colours don't scan in very well. So I need to re-add those in. So I, I will touch up the originals um, before I sort of send them out or send them to anyone or add them to my portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I, well, you do a, a rough sketch first. You do the whole sketch. So that oh, yes. That yeah, yes. Puzzle, so get... That's like your plan, right? Yes. And yeah, I always do a rough sketch. It's mm -hmm. it's rare. Even if it's just a quick thumbnail, um, even if it's a you know, personal project that I don't have to sort of worry about how it finishes, I do always do a little... That's how all my ideas start out as a rough sketch. Mm -hmm. So I do always have a plan. Um and the good thing about um, things like Photoshop and using acrylic paints or gouache is that if it goes wrong, you can just paint over the top. Um, and with Photoshop, you know, you can move things around and change them. So, yeah, I always start with a plan, mm -hmm. but that plan does change sometimes, not generally for client work, but sometimes if it's a personal thing and it's not working, I'll make changes to that original plan. Okay, let's look at the next image. Oh, so gorgeous. And I just want to show everybody. So we go here, we go here. Do you see that before we went live, I said to Sarah, every image you do is like a unique color story that's equally brilliant. And it's so important to not just repeat the same color palette in every piece you do. First of all, when art directors are looking to assign, they might want a moody color palette. They might want Abby and Cherry. They might want spooky, you know, so you want to show that you can do that. I want to just answer Liz Scotta's question. She said, what is an eight slash four page? Eight, four. So that was A4, which is not exactly letter size. It's letter size is the US and oh, yeah. is the British. It's similar version. to eight by 10. Mm -hmm. it's a bit it's a bit taller than eight by ten inches right i thought that was interesting okay um tell us about this piece yeah i love doing this and um sometimes it's hard to get an expression right um because you're trying to get a likeness um but also if it's an action shot or you know they're doing something slightly different with their face so obviously they're singing but um yeah so i i just really enjoy doing this one because it's with each piece there's something slightly different so the colors change um there's always something different to try um and that keeps me interested that's what keeps me motivated while doing a book like this with many many images let me guess what it was it that was it the veil and the paintings in the background <laughs> yeah I loved doing those paints in the background. They were originally nude, but um, because it's a kid's book, they asked me to cover them up. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, we have a question here. Um, let's see. Liz Scotta says, what is your favorite medium to use, watercolor, gouache, or acrylic? When do you favor one over another? Uh, when the mood takes me but probably acrylics are my favorite at the moment because I'm doing a lot more painting on canvas. So that what, when I do a lot of experimenting and trying new things that does filter into my um, illustration work as well. So it, it sort of feeds it and it grows from that. So at the moment acrylics, but I do love watercolors as well. I don't really use gouache. I have got a lot of gouache paints, but um, I think because they're quite flat, it's harder to achieve the texture that I really enjoy. So yeah, mainly watercolor and acrylics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh God, I just love clicking the next yeah. one because it's like, boom, a whole new, <laughs> oh God. 
So that's the one you picked out earlier to show, and I showed the sketch of that. So beautiful. From the book. Just your colors. And I think all your background as a textile designer, your background of doing different colorways, color palettes and all that, yeah. really paid off. Yeah, I think it's all sort of, I sometimes think to myself, oh, I wish I'd, you know, continue fine art at university. So, you know, I sometimes have that fleeting thought. And I think, well, no, because actually the textile design has really fed the way that I do create my illustrations now. And um, I don't regret it at all. It's all a journey, isn't it? And that's why, that's partly what I mean about going full circle. Mm. It all interlinks and, and uh, becomes and a story, doesn't it? It becomes your story and your style. And it all, um, it all builds, you know? Yeah in our lives the things we like build us to the next help us get to the next step and the things yeah. that we think we don't like we still may be learning a lot we'll learn what yes. we don't like we learn what not to do we but even so there's always good stuff in everything yeah okay. yeah definitely tell us about this oh we saw the nuryev sketch yes yes so um i wanted to show the whole page because although it hasn't got the text included mm -hmm. i um for the top one i really liked the way that i added the ballet legs for the border mm -hmm. um and that was one of my favorite ones even though it's the most simple the rudolph one even though it's one of the most simple mm -hmm illustrations in the book it just um i don't know it's something about the colors and the simplicity um and the space around it that i really like because like i tend to add quite a lot in so for me to do something a bit more pared back sometimes is stronger in my opinion um and then the one beneath i wanted to show how the river flows around the border so it goes from her name all the way around, around the border so with the flowers. Pretty. So pretty. I love that easel. It's all so yeah. beautiful. I would like an easel like that myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Frida Kahlo and Alvin Ailey. Yeah, so again, that. just showing the border designs as well. Um, and you have I really like the free sorry. You have fun with everything. You dive in, you step up to the plate. So with the borders, someone else might just do little dots or something, but you f gave 100%. The, yeah. So on the Frida Kahlo piece on the right-hand page, the left is a little monkey. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> or the, on the right-hand page of, of Frida Kahlo, the pen dripping onto her, her, cr her uh, there's, what's that called a crutch yeah crutch yeah. <laughs> yeah and the roots coming out of it I mean it's just so thoughtful yeah and I really enjoyed the sort of the perspective of the bed even though it's probably not a a true or correct perspective I quite like it when things are a bit wonky and yeah yeah, Wonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh it's so beautiful oh now we go into these golds which are are so Gustav Klimt, so much like his work, but in your own unique way. So yeah, so oh this God. is from the I Know an Artist book, and I wanted to show a few of these because um, I haven't shown that many on my Instagram, and um, I just, this is one of my favorites. And yeah, in each illustration, I tried to, I really enjoyed trying to get some of their style into my style. Um, if that makes sense. So totally trying, does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The S on Gustav on the top. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> how it's about those semi gold semicircles creating the letter S as negative space. So you really like push to the like, just push yeah. that so far. I guess in this one, you could probably see more of the sort of textile design aspect. Mm, yeah. A bit more, a lot of pattern, hasn't it? Oh my God. You know what I would like? Um, I love, I'd love to print this on Spoonflower and make a dress out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk cool. about that after, okay? okay. Do you have a Spoonflower page? 
I set one up ages and ages ago, and there's probably about two things on there. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on with it. But... What, what's the name of it? Because I bet uh, I think it's Beetroot Press. Be I think Beetroot Press. Beetroot okay. Press. I think. Is that I've... all one word? Well, we can... yeah. Uh, no, Beetroot and then Press. I think. Okay. But it's been such a long time that I'm not 100 percent sure. It's either that or Sarah Papworth. So one this or the other. So unbelievable. Or really any of the patterns from this. I mean, I want to make like this dress I made. I, I make a lot of my clothes because I can do exactly what I want. And yeah, then, that's amazing. I'd like to sew more of my own clothes, but I yeah, it's just another thing <laughs> yeah, well, on yeah. my long list. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So anyway, we can that would be so cool. This is, I love this Utrillo piece, just, well, both. Yeah, I just, it was great to, again, try and include some of his style within my style. And it, I really love this piece because these colors are the sort of colors that I really enjoy. Um, and I probably wear a lot of this, you know, those are the sort of colors I wear, the blues and the greens. And um, just sort of making it really, sort of smudgy and um the lines on top of it and the texture it just it was yeah i really enjoyed making this piece so i wanted to share it so beautiful love it and then as a difference the cara walker oh, one below which is more yeah. graphic but that um with yeah. the chain around it yeah <laughs> so fabulous okay so tell us about this. I know about these pieces. <laughs> so um, the top one and the one on the left, the notebook, are from the mat, one of the maths courses. So it was editorial, wasn't it, the top one? Mm -hmm. And then I think the notebook was yeah. from Bootcamp, I think. And then um, the little bone broth one was part of the uh, Washington Post. It was a spot illustration for Washington Post um, illustration. I put them all on the same page because I felt like they had a similar sketchy sort of feel to them. Um, and I've recently just done a book in a similar style to the top illustration, which I was quite excited about because um, it just felt like a, a slightly different style to uh, the Rainbow Revolutionaries and the other books I've been doing. So it was really fun to try something different. Yeah, it's just, I mean, line quality, just gorgeous line quality. And uh, oh, beautiful, beautiful, crazy about it. Okay, tell us about this. So this was one of the Art Menagerie, Lily's Menagerie um, pieces. Um, that I did, I guess it was in January, December, January um, time. And this is actually a piece that I painted all in one go. So this, I, I did adapt it on Photoshop because I had to take, it was quite big, it was A3. I've actually got it behind me on the wall. And um, I did a series of three of these. Actually, I think the three are on the PDF, so okay. you could scroll through, but um so I did the texture behind and then I painted the white on top and they were so fun to do. And it was something different for me. Um, Just and, gorgeous. The, the quality of the paint, the thickness. Yeah, it was really fun. And this was with acrylics just on cardboard, uh, mm -hmm. recycled cardboard. So it wasn't anything particularly special, but it was really fun to create them. So then the textures behind and then I created the white on top and then on top of that I painted in the line work. Um, it was really fun to create something totally by hand mm -hmm. and to come off the computer for a while. Oh, gorgeous. And this gorgeous. is also menagerie work. Um, this is where you set the uh, colour palette for us and you gave us the um, mood board to follow. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this is... Oh, I'm sorry, I just want to tell them the menagerie yeah. is what I give my artists that I represent every fall, uh, some assignments I create for them to produce work that we then reveal in January to art directors as a kind of trade show, um, virtual trade show. 
So you created this for that. And what was really fun, this was one of the first pieces, I think, actually, and it was just so fun to create a personal piece, but to, to a brief that you'd given. And um, I just really got involved with playing with the colours on Photoshop and adding in the textures. And yeah, it was just a really fun piece to create. It gave me a lot of joy. It's, I mean, I'm looking at the leaves in front. Yeah, yeah, those bottom, leaves. Just those leaves. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The level of sophistication and confidence and style and just and then below the basket how it's depicted with this light blue line on the dark blue background and mm -hmm. with the wonkiness that I adore in your work <laughs> just spectacular oh my I don't rem remember this piece do I know this piece this is, yeah, we, I <laughs> is that for the menagerie too yeah yeah so it was not along the same theme and Incredible. if you can see some of the similar leaves are within that pattern and actually this um i started off doing a pattern i wasn't quite sure how the pattern was going to turn out and then i accidentally mirrored it and that gave me the idea to create this sort of mirrored pattern. i love it i love it i would like each of these as stickers i uh, i've been doing <laughs> a um doing making a scrapbook from our trip um, oh wow history. and and i'm using like vintage wallpapers and oh nice old bits of vintage fabric but these would just be i'm gonna print this out and use it so cool and then i'll show you this is tell us about this masterpiece so, <laughs> so this was from the um retreat last year oh, right. at, at your house lilla and um, you set us a task to draw, I think it was draw something purple or draw, draw a fern, draw a leaf or something. And I already had painted in the background yellow colour, so I just drew on top of that. But I was really pleased with how they turned out, so I thought I'd add to the PDF, but it's, it's part of my sketchbook. Is um, it yellow acrylic? Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow, you did this outside. Yes, yeah. Ooh. And then this piece is was from the Hermit Art Club. So this was, I think, this maybe week ten, maybe or nine. It was paint a scene week. And so I did paint this all in one go. Um, oh, incredible. Yeah, one of my most recent pieces of work. So I wanted to share share that. Yep. I want to talk about this piece. First of all, the only pure white thing in here is the woman's dress. And it's so cold and ghostly against everything else that's muted. It really tells, it gives you that ghostly vibe so well. Yeah. How she does the house. It's not just any old house. She's probably researched or maybe researched over the years. So she has a vocabulary in her head already of houses, of the, the, the shape and the Tudor in the front and the brick uh, of the chimney and the, and the shingles on the ceiling and the odd shapes of the windows, the door, how it fits in the Tudor kind of shapes, the stucco. There's so much that's thoughtful, let alone the color, let alone the texture. And then in the foreground, how that the whole piece is kind of um, framed, framed in this um, vi feeling of all, all the plants that are mostly done in blacks and grays that mm -hmm. encircle the entire image, except for the path on which the woman is walking. It's very masterful. Thank you. And that is actually a real house near near to me. Mm. Well, you see. Although it's not pink. Mm. The pink is made up. But it is a real house. It's a Cotswold stone house. Mm. Well, um, I hope that you live in the Cotswolds. <laughs> because yeah. it's like fairy tale world, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like yeah, fairy yeah, tales. yeah. I was in the Cotswolds when I was... 15. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. How about that? Where did you go? Do you remember? Yes, my brother went 
to Cheltenham, the school. Oh, Cheltenham. 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 Ah, yeah, that's, that's only about half an hour from me, dry. Wow. And that was like built in like the 1300s. No, not really. I don't know, but it was just, just an amazing. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. Seriously? Yeah, it could have been, yeah. 13th century. Our pub is a 13th century tavern, I think. And I think the house I'm in at the moment is a 16th century house. That's amazing. In the US. <laughs> oh, I haven't cool. seen any ghosts. <laughs> oh, yet. Okay. So tell so us this, about this gorgeous yeah, so piece. This, so this is another Hermit Art Club piece. And... Um, I wanted to show it just because it felt a bit different. It was collagey, feels a bit sketchbooky. Mm. Um, it draws on one of the themes for one of the weeks was uh, nature gather. So I asked people to gather things from their garden or just nearby and draw them and create a sort of collagey um, nature page. And actually, when I was younger, one of my most favourite things to do was to create nature books. And I used to call them things like, I used to do the front cover and it used to be nature rules and then put an OK with an exclamation mark afterwards. And then inside it would all be about snails and plants and things oh, and leaves. I'd love to see those. This is so inspiring to me for my scrapbook where I am hand lettering and you know, oh, yeah. little bits, but this is stunning. This is the kind of, so I have a photo and then I'll put things around it. Like I said, the oh yeah, lovely. but this oh, is amazing. Oh, I wish I could do flowers like the blue flowers on the right. You did. That is so beautiful. You can learn a lot from this. It's fantastic. And the end of the portfolio how gorgeous. This is collage, right? This is, yes, yes. So actually this is a piece from the Menagerie two years ago mm -hmm. and I've just taken part of it and to fill in the apple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a collage um, original piece which I've scanned in mm -hmm. and then yeah, the lettering is hand done by pen but I've scanned that all in so and put fantastic. together on Photoshop. So fantastic. We're going to now go back to us. Sarah, that was, wow, so incredible. Um, Thank let's you. People, pe people's comments. Um, everybody is, this is dreamy, and I want to jump in every single piece. Aww. I feel like we're in the bushes. Colors, colors, so beautiful. I want first dibs on the piece if you sell it, says Abby Jacobs. <laughs> Hooray, Hermit Club, says Audrey Zabo. Um, Riley Wilkinson says, wow, it's like a fresco. This is so beautiful, stunning, oh, wow. Oh my, wow, it's so beautiful. Everyone? Isn't that nice? That's so nice. Um, so I want to just finish, before we do the giveaway of her incredible book, it's such an important book right now too, such an important book and filled with so many, look at this. Oh my God. Oh, that was nice, the flipping. <laughs> so the final, oh, two final questions. What makes a great art director for you? What's an art director you've worked with that you love? Number one. Um uh, well, my favourites are always the ones that are the most friendly because quite often if you're doing, well, any project is good to have a bit of fun, you know, it'd be a nice project when everyone's friendly when you're working on it. But when it's a long, long project like a book with many, many pages and you have to spend quite a lot of time together, you do, you want it to be um, an enjoyable process. So, yeah, probably number one, friendly um it's always good if they're organized with a brief and um you know they focus on on the all that kind of stuff the organization and you can then just focus on the drawing um that's just ideal for me um and what do you mean by they're nice <laughs> an example well they're polite um 
profession professionally uh, friendly I guess so you know um just you feel I mean they don't have to be like how are you doing today necessarily but you know just polite and friendly in their emails um sometimes you speak on the phone but generally it's by email so um it's always good if there's prompt replies I always try and reply as soon as I can so it's good not to be kept waiting and things like that um, just to keep the project moving and everyone happy really mm -hmm. um but yeah just friendly and kind really oh, just because yeah and, I, and it's okay to say if, you know there's something wrong with the the rough or you know I'm not saying that um it's uh but to, for them to deliver that in a way that's kind or respectful yeah, I totally yeah. agree. It's the same mm -hmm. with illustrators. Art directors and agents want illustrators that are kind and professional. Mm -hmm. I remember years and years ago, art directors would say, like when they would come to speak at my college when I was a student, they'd be like, you know what? If you're not great to work with, I don't care how fabulous you are as an artist, there's always another artist. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I, no. yeah, and I pretend that I do always try and be friendly and, you yeah. know. Well, obviously, I... between that and your great art, it's a winning ticket. And before <laughs> we do the giveaway, last but not least, um, what would your dream project be? Well, there's so many things I haven't tried yet, and I always like trying new things. I'd like to do maybe a recipe book, illustrated recipe book, mm -hmm. or a deck of cards. Or oh, yeah. I want that deck of cards. Art directors, if you're listening, yeah, please, can you do a deck of mm -hmm. cards with Tara? I need those, <laughs> like affirmation or tarot, and, yeah, and yeah. very mystical, like I am. We love all the mystical intuitive stuff. So please, please, we need those cards. Please. Would you <laughs> I please, don't really... like manifest that? Just manifest Yeah, okay, it, yeah, okay? I'll do, I'll do that. <laughs> Post it, whatever you do, yeah. please, I need those. Okay. I'd also really like to do a, um, I'd actually really like to do some kind of mural, but I mean, I don't know if my computer would actually take doing it to site, to scale, but yeah, I'd love yeah. to design a mural for a building or something that really appeals to me. Well, Sarah Jo did those huge murals for yes. the hospital. Yes, yes. I know. Oh, yeah. talk to her about that. And, and you know, you just, I mean, they can, if you do it in, in Illustrator, not Photoshop, yeah. then yeah. they can just. Yeah, just that's true. Yeah. Eyes. That's the beauty of that. Okay, who's ready for the giveaway? So here are the rules. You're going to use the chat panel. So press the button down for the chat panel and pop that open. Um, we are going to say a category. You can type in your answer. You can type in as many answers as you want, as often as you want. And Kim, say hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> in the background and she is going to look as best as she can because they come so quickly and find the first answer she sees that is correct and I'm trying really hard not to like blurt out the answer it's like when you can't say a word it's just like I'm so tense right now it's unbelievable <laughs> I can't even look okay so does everybody have it and and even if you guessed it but Kim didn't see it and somebody else it's the first one she sees, and then that person will win the book and will send to you. So the category is, the category is an animal. Go. All right. Oh my Help God. Help me out if you fast. see it. Ooh. Wow, it's so fast, isn't it? Oh goodness. It's impossible. <laughs> oh my. Ah, I can't even tell. Oh, I think I saw it. Wait, stop everybody. Oh my gosh, stop. I think I saw it. Oh, wouldn't that be funny if I was wrong? I saw um, one. I saw somebody, but it's at the bottom. Oh, yes. Um, Emily Hamilton. The answer was hedgehog. Yay. So well done, Emily. You can email me at Kim, K-I-M, at lilarogers.com and we'll organize... So it's a beautiful book to be sent out to you. 
Thank and you. And you, you can always order it on Amazon and um, or Barnes and Noble or wherever you like to get your books. Um, that was so wonderful. One last thing. I keep having one last things, but it just occurred to me. Do you have any advice for the illustrators that are watching? Any advice for them? They're like, maybe they're not as far along as you are. They like an, some encouragement or? Well, I think as you taught me, Lilla, um, to always follow your joy. It seems like my work is always, when I've got a job or um, when I've done a project that I'm just personally very pleased with, it's generally comes from something that I love, something I'm inspired by, something I really enjoyed making. Mm -hmm. um, so joy, joy is the key. And just keep going, just keep making, because the more you do, the better you get. Yeah. Um, the more you learn about yourself, um it's yeah it's a wonderful journey to be on so don't stop mm -hmm. keep so, going so true so true and your you know what your work has made me want to make some art it's just oh like, wow <laughs> i just feel so inspired i want to Brilliant. push and make i want to make art so well thank you so much for your oh, thank you. And amazingness and all your awesomeness and I'm I'm a very lucky agent that I get to represent you. Oh, I need to remind you. Oh, this is proof that it was hedgehog. Not that you don't believe <laughs> us. But I feel like I don't know why I did it. The next Thank webinar. So What's up? Thank you so much, Lilla. It's been fun. Oh, thank you. The next webinar, July twenty third, twelve thirty Eastern time. Julia Christians from Germany. And she is a riot. We're going to have a lot of laughs and her work is great. And she's very busy with picture books. So that will be wonderful to see. Thank you everyone so much for attending and commenting and being so incredibly awesome. And yeah, thanks everyone. Show you right here. Wait, why is that? It's so it's back. Oh, here. See this blue <laughs> tray? You see this blue tray? That's new. Did you notice? Those are all my children's books, and it, it's like hugely wide. Wow. You know? But <laughs> I wheeled it in from the living room, became ridiculous. So now um, that is my um, children's book pile. And don't forget that the child, my illustrating children's book course that I teach with Zoe begins um, like in a week and a half, like the last Monday of this month, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm hoping to join that. Oh, that would be amazing. Hopefully, yeah, I should have time. Hopefully. And, and what I want to tell, so do go to makeartthatsells.com, sign up for that class. It's going to be incredible. But um, to prepare, please be drawing children. Draw children, all kinds of children, diversity, different kinds of children. Just draw children because you need to have, um, well, we do, you could have a choice of a, a manuscript with a child an animal or a thing. So if you can't draw children, that's okay. You can draw things like Oliver Jeffers with his pencils. So, but anyway, I hope to see you there. Oh, 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 oh good, good, good. Uh, it starts July 27th. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Sarah. And we will see you next time. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.